What's poppin' sexies? It's your boy here, back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes, and today we're gonna go ahead and do a top 10 favorite seasonal art discussion from me. So this was actually a request by a guy named Topaz Phoenix. Shoutouts to him, but he commented on one of my other videos and said, Hey Tacho, why don't you do an artwork discussion video? And I thought it was a pretty good idea. Artwork is of course one of the most dr important driving factors to the game. We see good art and it makes us want to summon. So that's exactly what we're going to be talking about here today. Now there are going to be a few exceptions. We're talking about seasonal units here, but we're not going to talk about the duo and harmonized heroes. I'm going to do a separate video talking about them. And we're also not going to talk about the Grand Hero Battle or Tempest Trial units, because I would like to talk about them in a separate free-to-play video where I'm talking about favorite free-to-play artworks. So with all the rules out of the way, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. These ears aren't just for show. I can hear the enemy's footsteps. So we're going to be starting off with an honorable mention here. This is going to be the Bunny Fear. One of the most adorable units in the game. She is just so cute. I remember when I first saw this artwork, I was like, oh man, that is so adorable. And it still stands to this day. There's not too many artworks that I think are more cute than this. And the concept too, it's just fear wearing bunny ears and having this little tuxedo on to be fancy. And then her weapon too is like this big carrot that she's got on a stick. <laughs> so very nice. Now... As far as the weapon goes, she's considered an axe unit in the game. Although this weapon very clearly looks like it's a lance or a sword or something like that. Oh, we've seen that happen though many times already. Raven, for example, he's very clearly holding a sword in his artwork. <laughs> but for some reason, the devs decided to count him as an axe unit. Not sure what's up with that, but pretty cool. This bunny fear is one of my favorites. And for her attacking artwork, we have her in a jousting sort of stance, where she's about to stab the enemies with her lance, <laughs> aka axe. It's, once again, just very clearly showing that that was probably meant to be a lance, but they decided to make it an axe for some reason. And then we have her special attack artwork, very colorful. I like the Easter eggs flying around and also the flowers. Very nice touch and <laughs> very spring-like. And finally, the injured art. This is just so cute. My paternal instincts just trigger immediately when I see this. And I, I don't want to see Fear getting beat up. So if y'all are attacking Fear, then you're going to meet the broad side of my fist. <laughs> so you better watch out. And for her lance too, we're, we're seeing more of it. We're seeing it get broken apart. And the thing looks like a real carrot, if you ask me. It doesn't look like a prop. You can tell where the parts where it's broken, it looks like what a carrot looks like when you break into it. So I think she's actually using a carrot as a weapon. Pretty awesome stuff. This is a typically normally plain winter festival outfit, isn't it? Okay, moving on to number 10, we have the Winter Tharja. Yeah, the, the one who started it all, basically. Fire Emblem Heroes felt like a pretty modest game overall. Yeah, there were some fan service -y Camilla arts, but nothing on the level of this. I remember when this first dropped that Christmas, we were all just awestruck <laughs> because, first of all, it was very obvious that they were trying to play up the fan service. And not only that, she's considered an armored unit, even though she's wearing a bikini or some kind of lingerie or something. So I, I don't know what the deal is with that. But obviously Tharja is a normal girl, <laughs> as her flavor text exclaims. I think Tharja is really the only character that would be able to pull something like this off. There's no other character that you could do this to. Put them in a Christmas outfit and just make it be lingerie and somehow get it to work. So Tharja definitely was able to bring this to the table. And she started a trend that some people hate and some people like where... Armored units just seem to be wearing nothing resembling armor at all. So that, that gets on people's nerves and also the fan service -y outfit gets on some people's nerves. But I don't mind. I'm down for the thick mamas as you all know. Okay, here is her attacking artwork and it looks like she's 
gonna smack somebody with those lit candles. <laughs> Something you definitely don't want to have happen. I also like her little smile that she's doing there. <laughs> Alright, then we got the special attacking artwork. Some presents flying around, and then she's holding a wreath with a bow on it. So, <laughs> very cute. And finally, the injured artwork for her. Looks like her top is about to come undone. <laughs> it seems like one of the straps got ripped off. And she seems to be taking it surprisingly well. That's not the face of a girl that's <laughs> upset about being attacked. So, of course, they had to play up the fan service even more and give us this very sussy face on the lewd artwork there. It seems that this is the garb of the Spring Festival. It is somewhat awkward. Okay, moving on to number 9, we have the Spring Minerva. Yeah, this one is definitely one of the more stylistic artworks in the game, but I really like this one a lot. She looks like a dealer in a casino. Like, if I was head, if I was to head to Las Vegas and hit up the tables, maybe play some blackjack, I feel like Minerva would be the one dealing out the cards. <laughs> so they, they went with a really classy, like, gambler type of outfit here, I guess you could say, but it does fit with the spring theme as well. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with these, like, Japanese bunny cafes or... I don't know what to call them, really. It's like a bunny bar. You go in there and... You get surrounded by these bunny girls and they provide you with drinks and a good time. So I, I think that's probably the inspiration for this for the Easter themes. But it really suits Minerva well and I really like it a lot. So this is one of my favorite artworks. Then for the attacking artwork, we have her about to stab somebody with that bunny lance. Not sure how much damage that's going to do, but I guess... All the fluffiness of a bunny can still hurt when you're getting smacked by it in Lance form. Alright, then the special attack artwork. We have some Easter eggs flying about. Those are some fancy Easter eggs. It looks like they got pearls on them. So yeah, very expensive, very high class there. Once again, playing up the theme of this Minerva being classy and high society and probably working at a casino. And the injured artwork, we have her getting beat up a little bit. I don't like how her um her bunny lance is crying in pain because it's being hurt. Kind of weird, but okay. And then her top hat came off. It's a very tiny top hat with bunny ears on it, but I mean there's no way something like that would stay on your head. It kind of reminds me of Hey Arnold's hat. If you guys have ever seen Hey Arnold, he had this really tiny hat that was <laughs> like 10 times too small to be on his big football head. So it gives me those types of vibes. And then her stockings getting ripped up just to give people some fan service and <laughs> flashing the legs there. You're looking at a bona fide master of mischief. Who should I impersonate next? Okay, moving on to number eight, we have the Joker Zane from Halloween. I actually love this guy's artwork so much. He looks like a jester, and he's got playing cards, of course. Just like I said with Minerva, this guy, I could see him working at a casino. Maybe not in a jester outfit, but with the cards, of course, that's what you would expect. He's got this checkerboard pattern shirt with black and red, and I think it fits. And also, his clothes look like they've been sewn together very haphazardly. Again, something you would expect from a jester. But the card theme and him swinging those cards around reminds me a lot of a Killer Clown from Dawn of Sorrow. He's one of the enemies you fight, and his attack, the throwing cards, is one of the best attacks in the game. So, I've always liked that sort of thing. Okay, then we have his attack animation, where he's got the, the cards floating around magically presumably about to attack with them. And the special attack art, we have the, like, flames coming out. Not really flames, but this bright orange smoke or something of that nature coming out of the cards. And the cards are glowing too, which is pretty cool. Very nice effect there. And finally, his injured art, his cards are getting torn and tattered, as is his sewn-together clothes. So, pretty good. Not too bad. Delivering presents is grueling labor for a delicate flower like me. 
If only somebody would do it for me. All right, moving on to number seven. We have the Winter Hilda. <laughs> yeah, this lazy bum of a girl who took over Twitter that year to tweet us out some stuff. Now, there was some very sussy tweets going to Hilda, by the way. Like, I'm not going to go into detail here, but if you guys were a part of the festivities, you probably already know what I'm talking about. But Hilda is a good girl. She may be lazy and she may be a bum, but she is very cool and cute. And I do like this attire for her. I also like her weapon as well, the giant candy cane. <laughs> Something you wouldn't expect to be a weapon, but actually doesn't seem like it would work out too badly. All right, then we have the attacking animation. Looks like she's about to swing that thing like a battering ram. <laughs> so, yeah, once again, pretty cool. I also like the, um, whatchamacallit, the animation here, or can't really say animation because it's a still image, <laughs> but the vibe that it's giving off, the movement of her, like the fluidity of her movement, you can sort of tell where it's going, and I do like the concept of that. Like, she's going to swing it. You can pretty much tell. Then we have the special attack artwork with a bunch of gifts flying around and looks like a stuffed animal of a bunny. <laughs> so more bunnies. They sure love their bunnies in Fire Emblem, right? But all very cool. I also like the lighting effects and those sparkles that are going around as well. And then the injured artwork where she's trying to block her attack with the candy cane weapon. I don't even know if that's really a candy cane. It seems more like a lance that's been dressed up with gift wrapping or something. Whereas with the bunny Minerva or the bunny fear that we looked at earlier, it looks like her weapon was really a carrot. <laughs> but I don't think this Hilda is really using a candy cane. It's probably just a regular lance that's got some gift wrapping paper on it. Still very nice and very cool. They say that a skilled ninja can walk on water or soar through the air. This will be a challenge. All right, moving on to number six, we have the Ninja Levitane, a very awesome unit. Levitane is more like Bevitane, in my opinion. I really love the Moose Spell sisters. They're really cool and some of my favorite OCs in the game. Here we have Ninja Levitane, and she straight up looks like a Kill La Kill character, if you guys have ever seen that anime. That's just the type of vibes I get from this artwork. It's very stylistic and very cool. The only downside I can say about this one is her high heels look a little bit too high. I'm not really sure how anyone's supposed to walk in those. Seems more like it's meant for fashion as opposed to function, <laughs> but it's all good. Still looks pretty cool, and I also like her weapon as well with the split-in-half shuriken. A very cool concept and something we wouldn't really see too normally. All right, then we have the attacking animation where she's crouched down. A <laughs> crouching tiger hidden dragon, of course. And then I also like the sign she's doing with her hand. It looks like a hand seal from Naruto. Like she's about to pop a jutsu off or something. So all very nice. And then this is where it gets really cool. So we have the special attack animation here. And I really love the look of the flames. It's very stylistic and very cartoony. But it also pops really well. It's very vibrant and it matches her color scheme on her outfit as well. So this is one of my favorite special attack arts in the game. And then finally, we have the injured artwork from her. Not too much in the way of fan service, but I will say it does remind me of the punk girls from Pokemon Masters. You know those girls, like the dark skinned girls with the pink hair and then they got the shark teeth? <laughs> That's kind of the vibes I'm getting from this artwork. So, pretty cool nonetheless. I never even considered dressing like this. Do I put you in mind of Loki? Alright, moving on to number five. We have a very, very fan service option here. <laughs> the second of the two Leg sisters. Leg Jarn, more like Baked Jarn. I love Baked Jarn so much. And this outfit is really goddamn sexy. I love the pose she's doing as well with the arms up. <laughs> like, she, she knows she's got it going on, and she's proud to show it off, which I can appreciate. I also like the dagger that she's got on her leg that's, <laughs> like, tied there to a garter belt or something. Very cool, very sexy, and very badass. Then we got the attacking animation. 
Of course, they had to have her little pario flying up in the wind so we could take a peek at the cheeks, right? But all fan serviciness aside, I also like the pose she's doing with the dagger. She's about to stab the enemy, so very nice. And then the special attack artwork. Again, it's very stylistic, like what we saw with Levitane, where the flames look very cartoony, and here the water looks kind of cartoony, and it's very vibrant too. It really pops with the black and red colors of her outfit. And then finally, the injured artwork. As if Bagjarn wasn't showing enough skin, <laughs> Insys decided to double down and have her swimsuit start ripping apart. I don't know if it was necessary to do all of that. I, I was more into the neutral art where she's got it going on and she's like posing for the camera. But this one, I guess, is okay as well if you're into that sort of thing. You are in the presence of Fafnir, Neatha Valir's king. Greetings in this new year. All right, moving on to number four. We got my man Fafnir here, all decked out and pimped out for the new year. <laughs> this dude is all blinged up. Look at him with his charcoal -y, grayish, smoky black outfit. I love this kimono too. It has some gears on it to sort of represent Nita Valir and the steampunk aesthetic that we got from that book. And he's also holding a rose there. He looks like he's ready to go dancing, if I'm being honest. Like, I could totally see Fafnir biting down on that rose by the stem and taking um, Regan in arm to do some dancing. If you guys remember the dance-off video from April Fool's Day, we all know Fafnir's got the moves, so <laughs> I could totally imagine that. But I do like the color scheme here of the black and the gold. And they even got some purple in there too. Purple and gold and black and gold and black and purple. All of those colors just mix very well. And Fafner is pulling it off in spades. Alright, then we got the attack animation. He's about to smack somebody upside the head with that rose. So better watch out. And then we got the special attack art. It's very vibrant. I really like how colorful and how much the pop is on those gears that are flying around. Very nice, and then there's a really bright red to the flashing animation of the wind flying by him. So all very good, really nice special attack art. And finally, something for the ladies, we got an injured artwork where his shirt is coming off. <laughs> so you can see that Fafner be hitting the gym on the regular. This man got some pecs and some abs on him. <laughs> ladies, you guys are into that, then there you go. Shoutouts to Promise. I'm sure Promise is into that. <laughs> but always nice to get equal opportunity fan service, and this Fafner is doing that, so pretty good. I had my own idea for an outfit, but no one seemed to like it. All right, coming in at number three, our bronze medalist on this list is going to be Lucina. The Valentine Lucina, or more specifically, the OST Lucina. I recognized this right away when I saw it. I knew it was the OST artwork from Awakenings OST. And I think it's really cool that they decided to go with that for an artwork for a seasonal. I never thought I'd be able to play as Lucina in that outfit, but it's a really cool concept and it really works. It's also very pretty and gentle for Lucina. Almost like we're getting a glimpse into the future after the events of Awakening where we get to see Lucina in a peaceful time where she's just... She's got this basket of flowers that she presumably picked while she was on a walk. And she's got this toga going on. I don't know if it's a toga, but it's very similar to the outfit that Valentine Alphonse had. And I would consider that a toga. So I'm just going to call this a toga as well. Alright, then we got the attacking animation. Lucina looks a little off balance here. I'm not sure if she really knows how to use an axe. <laughs> but... Then again, Lucina is a sword master, so we can't really fault her for not knowing how to use an axe. Then we got the special attack art with some more flowers flying around. <laughs> very peaceful and very colorful for Lucina. And finally, we got the injured artwork. Not really super fan servicey, but I guess her toga is coming undone by the strings as she's getting hurt. So, <laughs> I don't know, but I, I was more so a fan of the neutral artwork from this one. I think that one really suited Lucina well. 
I would die before failing you, master. <laughs> Do I sound like a real ninja yet? All right, our silver medalist coming in at number two. We have the ninja male Corin. Yeah, a demote unit actually made it this high on the list. We're going to see why that is in just a sec, but his neutral artwork is still pretty good as well. He's holding a shuriken there, obviously about to throw it. And we have him with his Naginata weapon as well. Very Japanese theme there. I've two very classic Japanese weapons and... His armor is very Japanese as well, something you would see from Samurais of the Feudal Era. So this is a pretty good art. Then we got his attacking artwork. This one is really nice. We also see on his Naginata that the blade is decorated with a dragon on it. <laughs> very, very good looking dragon there. And his angry face is putting Mantis to shame. <laughs> Mantis' angry face from, what was it, Infinity War I think it was, not Endgame. Wasn't really that angry, <laughs> but Corin, this is what I would consider an angry face. So, very nice. Okay, this is where this artwork just went through the roof for me. I think everyone agrees this is a really good special art. One of the best in the game for sure. I love the look of the clouds coming out. They really remind me of those old school feudal era paintings from Japan where you can almost see each brush stroke that the artist was taking with... The way that the clouds are moving and the fluffiness of them, uh, it's kind of hard to describe. It's very stylistic, but it looks really good. Also reminds me of Akatsugi from Naruto, where <laughs> Itachi got those red clouds on his coat. Those are really cool, and this really suits a ninja theme, so I love this artwork so much. And then we have the injured artwork. Not really quite as good as the neutral art and the attacking and special art, but... I guess it gets the job done. We got Corin here getting knocked off balance and some shurikens flying around. Not the best, but not really the worst either, so I'll take it. I am no mortal. Do not look at me as if I were. And coming in at number one, as if this was a surprise to anybody. <laughs> Y'all already know, Tatcha likes the thick mamas and... Goodness gracious, this Freya has got to be the thickest mama in the game. <laughs> I don't even know if I'd be able to handle all of that thickness. Freya looked like she could just turn left and knock me out. I also love how she's holding a goat floaty that's very obviously supposed to be King Freya. So <laughs> the brother that she loves so dearly, making a guest appearance on this artwork in the form of a floaty. But there's really not much else to say about this. It's just stunningly beautiful, very pretty, very hot, very sexy. <laughs> All of those words are apt descriptions. We got here the attacking artwork, showing off even more of those curves and thickness. If you guys weren't already bleeding at the nose at the first one. Then we got the special attack artwork here. I like that petal of water. It looks kind of like a flower that she's creating with her hand. Almost giving me some Waterbender vibes from Avatar. Although, Freya is the last person I would expect to be a Waterbender. <laughs> but there you guys go. Also, the Goat Floaty making a nice return there. And finally, the injured artwork, because as if Freya's art wasn't fan y enough, they had to show off everything. So we got some side boob action going on, and then we get to see her bare souls. Y'all know who you are if you're into that sort of thing. But I ain't here to judge. If you like it, then more power to you, I guess. So, two thumbs up from me. My favorite art in the game and the sexiest art in the game as well. So that's going to wrap us up for our seasonal artwork discussion. Those were my top tens and an honorable mention just to throw it in there. Let me know in the comment section, of course, what your favorite seasonal artworks are. Definitely interested to hear what you guys have to say about that. But that's going to wrap us up for this video, so thanks so much to everybody for watching. This is your boy Tacho signing out, so take care fellas, and I will catch y'all again on the flip side.